Welcome to another episode of the Read Pile. Today I'm going to do a video, possibly the first and hopefully only time, I'm reviewing a book that I have not finished reading. If you can tell, this bookmark is still at the very beginning. I think I'm on page like 8, maybe 10 at the most. But um, I'm loving this and I want to recommend it. It's recently available, so you should still be able to get a copy before it sells out, which I hope you are able to if you want. But um, look at this stacked list of names there. Uh, one other point of praise since I do bring this up on a frequent basis. Table of contents with page numbers. Wait for it. Page numbers. Somebody at Dark Horse knows what they're doing. So, um, the first thing I want to point out is this on the back here, which I think is pretty significant. But as I said already, I love this pretty quickly. It took me a minute to get into it. And I've talked about this before. I really I don't especially like reading things really prior to the 21st century. Yeah, I find really going back to 90s comics to be somewhat rough unless I have nostalgia and I read those originally back then. Like it's even hard to reread some of the 90s material. And then going back further, it's even more difficult. It's like 80s, I really can't tolerate. And before that, it's it's just really hard. But um, this was originally written many years ago. The copyright is all over the place, starting in 1939. And it's not written, I think, like any other comic. The closest I can come to is some really well-written movies. And... I think for me, the most recent example that I can think of is there's a TV show called The Bear, which is also excellent, highly recommended. But there was, in season two, there's a, I want to say Christmas? I don't think it's Thanksgiving. There's an episode near the end. I want to say it's episode eight of season two. Um, there's a big family holiday gathering. Everyone's cooking and eating and uh, sitting in the living room, but everyone is talking over each other. They're interrupting each other, and I think that is some of the best written dialogue in movies. Is not just character A says a line, character B responds, and then you know that. But the the interruption, the talking over each other, the having separate conversations at the same time, I love that stuff. It's kind of a pain, I think, both to write, to probably learn your lines, and then to direct, but it's, when done well, inc <laughs> it's incredible, it's lifelike, it's really, I think, how people have actual conversations instead of the, you know, fake stuff that usually happens in movies. Anyway, that that is some of what is happening here. These two, these two guys here. They are having conversations. Sometimes they'll be talking about something, but really they're talking about something else. They are talking over each other. They're interrupting. They speak in half sentences that maybe never finish. And it's, it's just fantastic. I knew, I think by page three, that this was really something special. And like I said, it took me a minute to get into it. But right away, uh, the art... Is fantastic. I loved it. There's a building, I think, right here. I love this. Everything about this panel. Whew. Yeah. I mean, the art is the art is spectacular. But the writing too is just phenomenal, and it's it's dense. The stories are on the longer side, and I knew that I wanted to praise this. And you can see here. Right, so it's about 40 pages. Let me get this one. This one's relatively short, but uh, it's it's. I I wanted to take my time with this. I didn't want to rush it. I I didn't want to read this quickly just to get a video out. Instead, I'm quickly getting the video out so that I can slowly read this, take my time, really enjoy it. Um, most of the art is Gnola. There's some Simonson, some Starlin. I don't remember who else is in this. All the names are at the front. Um, it's 
It's really good. I did a video. What I really wanted to talk about was I did a video some time ago. Um, Scud, in that I was talking about growing up fairly sheltered, and then once I was able to break out, I wanted to just devour everything that I felt like I missed. So I think in that I was talking about comics and movies primarily. But the same thing is true for books. And I've always been a fairly slow reader, in my estimation. I don't know if I have, like, some level of undiagnosed ADD or dyslexia. I feel like very mild. Um, but my eye just wanders over the page, and I have to reread sentences multiple times to, like, understand it. And I get bored, and I skip ahead, and it's just... It's not good. <laughs> Reading for me is a mess. Um, but once I got into audiobooks, I've... Oh, I don't know how many books I have. I think... I, between my wife and I, 1,500. Like, it's a lot. And I've read most of that. I've listened to it. But um, the same sort of thing took place for me there. So I've read, I've gone back to a lot of the classics, like Jekyll and Hyde, Frankenstein, Jules Verne, and uh, Dorian Gray, and listened to a bunch of the classics. I've skipped over, and I bring all this up because of Chaikin's introduction here, where he's talking... For him, things started with uh, Burroughs over here. He's talking about Klein. He's got some Gardner Fox. Frazetta gets mentioned. Howard. I don't remember who else. Um, somebody else I know. Uh, Moorcock. I first read Moorcock, I think, last year. And loved it. There's a lot of like precursor to Witcher obvious stuff in there. Um but I've always uh, skipped, whether unconsciously or, I don't know, unknowingly, skipped over uh, Burroughs and Howard. My first experience with Conan was actually Wood and Clunan, the start of their um, Dark Horse comic series, which I loved. But the only reason that I read Conan to begin with is because of Wood and Clunan. And... I've somewhat continued that, depending on who the creative team is, but I sort of skipped over that early pulp era, and I don't know why. I think I was going back earlier, because there are just so many books that pre-exist the 20th century, but um, even in the 20th century, it was, it was a lot of um, Stark and Westlake and uh, Chandler. I... I love these guys. Elmore Leonard, a little bit later, but I think I've focused on the crime genre and not sort of the adventure stuff, and now I kind of want to go back. So, Lieber, these are adaptations of Lieber's writings, and I think I want to go back and read some of that pulp adventure stuff. So, in here, again, Shaken's talking about Tarzan. He's talking about uh, really just his journey through pulp back in the 60s but um yeah this this is fantastic highly recommended again the writing is fantastic these two guys remind me of i don't think i mentioned this yet um two characters from one of my possibly favorite fictional overall world storylines ever which is Michael J. Sullivan's Elan series. It starts with Rhaeira, Revelations and Chronicles, and then goes into Legends of the First Empire, and then Rise and Fall, and uh, hopefully more, because that story isn't over yet. But, um, yeah, there, there's a swordsman, there's a thief, and they are phenomenal together. These two are as well, Fawford and the Grey Mauser. But um, highly recommended. Again, I hope you check this out. I hope you check out some prior writing from other eras. It's really good stuff. It takes a while. It takes a while. There's a lot of that classic stuff that I don't enjoy, but uh, Chandler, Westlake's Dark, Leonard. There's some others, but um, yeah, there's some really good stuff out there if you go looking for it. Morcock. I gotta read more of Morcock.